As soon as he was done with his special theory of relativity, Einstein knew that he had more work to do. After all, the special theory only dealt with motions at constant speed. And we all know that in reality, motions are always changing speeds, going faster, going slower, starting, stopping, so that we need to include acceleration to describe motion. Remember that acceleration means change of speed, and that change of speed can happen in two ways. You can go on a straight line and increase or decrease speed, accelerate or decelerate, or you can turn a curve, and that also implies in a force acting to change the speed, in this case, its direction, through a force that you feel pulling you outwards. According to Einstein himself, one day he had a sort of daydream that he considered the best idea in his life. What happens if a person falls from a roof? How heavy would she feel? Well, you can think of a similar situation, perhaps a little less dramatic. Imagine you're going up and down a fast elevator. Let's say you are at the top floor of a tall building and you start going down real fast. You will feel lighter, as if your weight is kind of disappearing. On the other hand, if you're going up fast, you will feel your weight is increasing. How could going up and down an elevator change your weight? Isn't weight caused by gravity, by how Earth is pulling on you? Einstein figured out that gravity and acceleration are kind of the same thing in the sense that accelerated motion can mimic gravity. So if you're accelerating up in an elevator, you could interpret feeling heavier by saying that the gravitational attraction from Earth was getting stronger. On the other hand, a person falling from a roof would feel weightless. This is called the principle of equivalence the equivalence between gravity and accelerated motion. Einstein figured that a theory of relativity that included acceleration had to be also a theory of gravity. Einstein then had an amazing idea. He knew that when you throw an object like a ball, it describes a curve, more precisely a parabola. This motion is caused by the acceleration of the Earth on the object. He then thought, what if instead of thinking about the path being curved by a downward acceleration, I say that the Earth bends geometry around it so that a curved path is the fastest one possible? In other words, said Einstein, matter bends space. Imagine that we have a flat surface, so like this two-dimensional surface here of the black cloth. If I have a planet and there is nothing to curve that surface, the path of this planet is going to be a straight line. Now, if instead I have a big mass that is able to curve the, the space, what's going to happen now is that the geometry of space is not going to be flat anymore. It's going to be this curved surface. So now when a planet is moving on it, it's going to have an orbit which deviates from a straight line like this. And so Einstein's insight was to say that planets go around the sun in elliptical orbits because the curvature of space around the sun makes it so. And that's what we call gravity. Compare Einstein's gravity with Newton's. In Newton's world, gravity acted instantaneously at a distance, like some kind of ghost. Newton didn't like this, but his theory was good enough to describe many phenomena. Einstein changed everything. Space became a physical entity, deformable by mass, and from the relationship between mass and energy, E equals mc squared, also by energy. Even light, having energy, bends space. In Einstein's world, space is plastic, part of physical reality, as is time. But how can we know if Einstein was right? Amazingly, in curved space, 
light rays would not propagate in straight lines. Einstein then figured that when light from stars go by the sun, they get diverted due to the curvature of space around the sun. But how can you see this since the sun is so bright? Easy, said Einstein. Look at the sun during a total eclipse when it's dark. Measure the position of the stars near it and then compare to their positions at night when the sun is gone. Well, in 1919, two teams of astronomers set out to test Einstein's theory during a solar eclipse. Even if the results weren't top-notch, they were good enough to confirm Einstein's prediction. Mass does bend space according to the equations of the general theory of relativity, the new theory of gravity. Einstein became a superstar, the man who created a new worldview based on matter bending space and distorting the flow of time. His next bold step came only two years after he proposed the theory. In 1917, Einstein applied his new theory to the universe as a whole. If we know how much matter there is in the universe, we can calculate its geometrical shape. Hence is born modern cosmology, the application of general relativity to the whole universe. Thank you.